Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Uh, today, we are answering questions about the wonderful work camping lifestyle. Now, I'm Jody Anderson Duquette here with Work Camper News. Uh, my family has been operating Work Camper News uh, for about the last 16 years. And so I've been working with those who um, are beers who embark on work camping and the businesses that hire work campers. So I've had the pleasure of working with both sides. Now, if you're not familiar with Work Camper News, our entity actually created the term work camping, uh, defined it, and started this whole industry. Uh, WorkCamper.com is our online home, and that's where you'll find all of our great resources, education, the most job listings that you'll find for work campers anywhere else, um, and a lot more. So uh, we've been around for, uh, I think, since 1987, so over 34 years now, almost 35, uh, and it's really just been a, a pleasure to help people live their dreams um, and help business owners be able to fulfill uh, their dreams for their business and, and keep themselves going year after year uh, by hiring work campers for their operation. So, all right, in today's webinar, um, those of you who are live with us, uh, I'm happy to take your questions. We had a lot of questions submitted uh, with registration and that's probably gonna take up most of the hour. Uh, but those of you who are online live, thanks for coming live and feel free to type in thoughts or questions that you have during the webinar. Uh, if you're on a laptop or desktop, you should have a control panel there on your screen with a chat or question section. If you're on a laptop, I'm sorry, a smartphone or tablet, uh, you'll have that questions option down at the bottom. And uh, I do have a little PowerPoint slide presentation just with uh, one question per slide kind of thing. Uh, so if you are on that smartphone or tablet, you can swipe the screen to go in between my talking face here and uh, the PowerPoint slide. So uh, we'll get through as many questions we can in about an hour. Uh, if we don't get your question or you do have more questions, we are always happy to help you here at Work Camper News. Uh, we're the only professional membership organization out there in work camping. We do have a staff that works in office Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Feel free to email us, uh, give us a call. We're happy to help you guys. That's what we're here to do. So, all right. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, we are recording this. Uh, we'll have the recording available. We put this on our YouTube channel along with other helpful videos. Um, of course, we'll have it in the media library at workcamper.com. Uh, that's a great library of uh, videos about work camping. And uh, one of those other videos I wanna mention that I've done, I know, um, is the 12 steps to work camping, uh, to how to find a work camping job. And uh, this is, it's a, as you guys will see, I'm, I'm never short on words, so, uh, if you're looking for a Cliff Notes quick version, um, sorry, you'll have to speed up uh, speed up my video there uh, to get through it faster. But um, we have lots to tell you guys because we know a lot and we, we love to share. So uh, 12 steps to finding a work camping job. Uh, it's going to take you even more thoroughly through um, those the, the, the best process to help you be the most successful at finding the job that's right for you, because uh, that's what's important. We want you guys to be able to know what you're looking for and how to go after something that's going to match your your goals and your hopes and your, your financial and budget needs, because um, the, the better a match an opportunity is going to be, the more fun, the better experience you're going to have, and that's just going to make everything better. So, um, so look for that 12 steps to finding a work camping job video. Again, that's on our YouTube channel in the media library at workcamper.com. Uh, we also have online courses available as well. So um, again, I just kind of plug this slide in here for those of you who maybe aren't members of Work Camper News yet, or you haven't uh, been on our website and checked us out. Um, again, we're the original resource for work camping. You'll find more job listings on our website than anywhere else. Uh, but we're not just focused on just displaying a bunch of job listings on a page. Uh, we're here, again, to help you do this successfully. So we focus a lot on the education, the how-to, and that's um, even just preparing yourself mentally for embarking on this lifestyle. Because, uh, again, for some folks, it's it's a big change transitioning to the RV lifestyle, and, and that's exciting and scary at the same time. Um, so... We want you to know, you know, what to do, how to do it, when to do it. So that way you feel more comfortable, you're more confident, and you're more likely to be successful. Uh, so that's what a lot of our services do. Um, with our job listings also, uh, they're much more better organized. Um, you'll always know what state the job is in. 
uh, and have information that you need uh, to help you with determining uh, if you want to go further with that employer and contact them to get more information. Um, so better search capabilities. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys something too we're working on. Um, so this is kind of a, a sneak peek. Um, that not everybody has seen yet, but I wanted to show it to you guys. Let me get this pulled up. Um, so we've been working on an update to our hotline jobs page. Do, 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 Google Chrome, that's what we're looking for. All right, so um, with our job listings, we know um, that a lot of times we're campers, you, you have a decent idea of what you're looking for and you wanna just get to the point when reviewing job listings. So um, with our online hotline ad system, which we display ads that have come to us in the last 14 days. So when you're looking at our hotline jobs, you always know the ads are current. They're not from months ago, years ago, or you have no idea when ago. Um, you're always going to see the newest and freshest here on our site. And also employers pay for advertising with us. Um, so you know the ads are legitimate. You're not going to find spammers or pirates or whatever. They've tried to get in, believe me they have, but because we have a team that reviews the ads and a process set up, uh, that kind of stuff you're not gonna find uh, on our website. So anyway, the super cool thing that's coming for you guys, um, we're enhancing our search capabilities. So uh, with our hotline ads, you're gonna be able to, um, if you're a solo, you can check to just view ads where employers have said they'll consider solos. Um, you'll be able to select, because um, most of you guys, you know, you're like, well, I can start in June. I don't have a specific day, but I could, you know, start sometime in June. Uh, or maybe you want to start in July, something like that. So you'll be able to select uh, what month that you're available to start in. So you can view the job listings that start in that month that you're looking for. Uh, you'll also be able to search for things like if an RV site is provided or maybe you don't have an RV and you're seeking um, other types of housing, dormitory, a house, an apartment, a park model, et cetera, you'll be able to um, sort the ads just for that. Um, if you want all hours paid or some other type of compensation, or if all you wanna do is work in trade for an RV site, you don't want any monetary compensation, you'll be able to sort and find the ads that are applicable to that. And of course, uh, you'll be able to select multiple states. So maybe you want to be in the South for the winter. So we could select, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Texas, Louisiana. We could select all those states. I only want to work and trade for an RV site. I'm going to start maybe in October and I'm a solo. Start your search. And it's going to narrow down the ads to that criteria that you're entering in. So uh, we're probably going to launch this here in the next um, week or two, I believe. Our programmers are on track for that. So we're really excited. It's going to be a really powerful way for you to wade through those ads. Um, if some of you have been maybe in social media groups or looked at some other websites, um, they're just they're just harder to get through. And you're not always sure kind of what you're looking at. And um, it's kind of hard to tell. There's inconsistency and, and stuff like that. So I'm super excited. Um, we've been working on this for a little while, so I'm really excited to share that. And that's going to be available um, to our diamond and platinum level members. Uh, again, we're a yearly membership organization. Our diamond level is the most popular. It's a measly $47 a year. Uh, you'll get access to all of the job listings. Our online magazine archive has over 90 issues in there. That's filled with educational articles as well as job listings galore so uh, you will not um, run out of things to look at and learn and opportunities and uh, yeah anyway I'm sorry I love what we do and I love talking about it but let's get to your questions because that's why you guys are here uh, but hopefully that kind of gives you a little um, boost up and an idea of where to where to start with your job hunt so all right multiple questions how do I find a job how do I even go about this um, what's the best way to find the right jobs, research employers, um, et cetera? When do I do this? When do I start looking for jobs? So again, um, if you wouldn't mind hopping over to the YouTube channel, you can watch that video, 12 Steps to Finding a Work Campy Job. I'm really gonna go in depth on the process in that video. Uh, but the best way to find a job is to become a member of WorkCamper.com, um, and <laughs> that's a great place to get started. 
Uh, so when you get in there, you'll want to start reviewing job listings just to kind of see what's out there. And maybe don't limit your searches initially. Uh, just start by kind of looking through all of them or at least all of the opportunities in the states you want to be in when you get started. Um, and I guess that's something too, just to kind of back up for a moment, um, when you're you know, thinking about work camping, uh, whether you're gonna be starting RVing as well at the same time as starting work camping, or maybe you've been RVing for a while and you're gonna add on work camping to your adventures, um, you just need to know kind of what, what your budget is. Um, you know, do you have income sources coming in, pension, social security, small business on the side, whatever. Uh, know what your income is or the amount of income you need to have come in to cover your, your basis. Uh, you know, make sure your bills are paid, maybe putting a little bit of a way to cover RV maintenance expenses or fun adventures. Um, and you can kind of do work camping however you guys want to do it. Um, there are some work campers that do one position and they just stay there for a long period of time, uh, whether it be you know year round or maybe they every summer they go to one job and then the winter they do something else and then the next summer they go back to that same job or you could never take the same job twice. Um, you could work a couple months, take a couple months off, work a whole season, take a whole other season off. You guys get to kind of make this how you want it. Um, that's one of the beauties of the work camping lifestyle. Now, if you are, seeking an opportunity, um, sometimes there can be some uh, more challenges to finding a, a particular opportunity. If you are seeking, for example, uh, uh, opportunity where you are paid for every hour worked and you're provided an RV site and other perks, part of the compensation, and you want to be in a prime area of Florida or Texas, maybe Arizona in the winter months, that's going to be a harder position to find. There's just less options in the winter months, especially uh, just because work camping typically is the outdoor hospitality industry. And as you guys know, in the northern half of the country in the wintertime, it gets a little chilly and snowy and a lot of stuff just closes down. They just don't operate in the winter months. So a lot of our beers and stuff flock to the south. So it can be a little more challenging uh, to find that opportunity for the winter months. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you're able to volunteer uh, or just work and trade for an RV site, that's going to open the door a little bit more, give you a little more flexibility, um, as there are certainly state parks, county parks, nonprofits, um, camps, and all sorts of places like that that seek volunteers just working and trade for sites. Um, and even some commercial campgrounds and RV parks and stuff in the South will just do that trade out um, for the, the winter months. Sometimes, if there is really a specific area you want to be in, in the South for the fall and winter, you may want to consider enduring a summer <laughs> in that location. If you come in for their summer season, you may then be able to just stay on for fall, winter, or have first pick at being able to stay on for fall, winter. Uh, so that's something to consider too. Uh, but don't let me like concern you like, well, there's not enough jobs and I'm going to be able to find something. That is certainly not the case. Um, especially the last couple of years, the work camping industry, just like kind of the normal business world, um, employers are struggling to find enough people to fill their positions. So um, don't be afraid to um, try uh, negotiating with an employer if you, you know, it's the right place and it's almost the right compensation or almost the right amount of hours or I'll do all of those duties except this one I'm really not comfortable with, you know, feel free to, to try to do some negotiating or some compromising. Um, it, you, you can always ask. The worst they can say is no, and if it's a no, then you just, you know, you move on. You know that's not the right one. So retreating back to where we started, <laughs> know what you're going to need to earn to be financially comfortable. And also, um, when reviewing the opportunities, look at the different types of jobs and the duties that are out there. Uh, be sure to read the Work Camper Experience postings that um, you'll see linked with some of our ads. So our Work Camper Experiences tool is a place where work campers can go in and say, I worked for XYZ employer and this is how it went. Uh, now, some reviews are super helpful and some of them are very short and you're like, that gave me nothing. Ah. But that's just the way it is with reviews. It's like reviewing anything. Some are helpful and some are, yeah. Uh, but be sure to, um, so, when there is a review for a specific employer and that employer is running an ad, be sure to click 
uh, we have that link right there with the ad. So you can click that to open work camper experiences and read the reviews. Um, again, that's available to our diamond and, and platinum members. So you can read the reviews connected with ads and also be sure to do, you know, uh, Google search the company, uh, TripAdvisor, Yelp, whatever other um, tool that might be out there where customers have reviewed that company. Um, and also you can um, go on like Facebook. Facebook has reviews now. Sometimes it has groups where you can review different things or maybe the, the business itself has a Facebook page with reviews. Um, so just be sure to do your due diligence too on that employer. But you're going to look through the different uh, types of jobs and duties that are out there. And you could be like, that sounds like something I would do. And that sounds like something I definitely don't want to do. So get an idea of I'm interested in trying this. I'm definitely not interested in trying that. Uh, so kind of know what you're looking for there. And then of course, just deciding where you want to go. Like that's you know one of the coolest parts um, is deciding where you want to be. And I do think work camping, especially right now, um, since camping is such a big boom, um, a lot of campgrounds and RV parks, um, reservations are filling up like fast. Some of the nicer state parks and stuff, if you want to be somewhere on a weekend, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like you better reserve that campsite back in January or February when the website activated those sites, you know, um, otherwise you're, you're not going to get to stay there. So work camping is a way for you to be in a location for a decent period of time that maybe you wouldn't be able to get in because the tourism is just going crazy right now. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well, uh, is that this is a way to allow you to do that, which um, I think is super cool. All right, so you're gonna know what you need financially. You're gonna know what you will do and what you won't do. Um, some ads are really good at spelling out what the jobs are, what the duties are, and other ads are not. You're going to have to do some work with that employer to get that uh, information out of them. So um, understand this is a process and um, you want to make sure to follow that process uh, to help ensure more success. You know, don't contact the employer. They email you right back. Sounds great. Can you come tomorrow? Sure. Uh, wait, is my RV going to fit on the site? How am I going to be paid? Is it weekly, bi-weekly, once a month? Um, what am I going to be doing? What are my hours? Oh, I have to work seven days a week instead of what? Wait a minute. So anyway, we got to ask a lot of questions ahead of time. And we're going to talk a little bit more that, about that and answering one of the questions later. So, all right. So in thinking about um, kind of this process, um, trying to kind of cliff notes it down, which is hard for me. Uh, all right, so we're reviewing job listings. You also want to get your resume uh, put together. So with work camping, it can be a lot more simple of a resume than like the career resume. Uh, here at Work Camper News, we have our resume builder tool, which will take you step by step into creating a resume that is geared towards work camping. Um, there's even um, there's a section where you can kind of type in whatever you want and say how awesome you are and stuff like that. And we even have a sample there that you're welcome to model off of. So we tried to take all the legwork out for you guys and just try to make this <laughs> as easy as possible uh, to help you with getting that resume put together. And also our resume database is only available to our uh, paid employer members. So uh, an employer has to be a yearly member with us in order to get in that resume database and search resumes. So when you make a resume in our system, it is not posted to the open internet. We do not email out your information without your permission, et cetera. Um, so just be cautious when using um, websites that are open, uh, free and open to anyone and anything on the internet. Uh, just be sure to hold back um, some information on those free sites. Uh, but on our site, again, we're secure, custom built, um, only available to members. But once you have your resume created, uh, you can have it available in the database if you want. We have some employers, they never advertise. All they do is go into our resume database, do some searches, start making contacts, and that's how they find all of their work campers. So if you wanna make sure you're opening yourself up to as many opportunities as possible, you wanna make sure you have that resume in the database and be updating it frequently, especially when you're on the hunt for that next position. So. Uh, you're going to get your resume put together. Again, it can be much more simple. We'll talk a little bit more about content in another question. And um, yeah, so you'll have your resume. You can send it out to employers if you want to. Uh, those who, um, you know, as a 
first inquiry, you can email your resume out. You can export your resume to a PDF file if you have to do an online application process. Uh, so super great, much more simple, but you'll want to get that resume together. Most employers are going to want that. Um, so yeah, once you have your resume and you start reviewing those job listings, then you'll start uh, making contacts. And uh, again, we'll talk a little bit more about that process with some of the questions. So, all right, let's go ahead and um, move on to the next one here. All righty. So a lot of folks are hitting the road with the kiddos, whether it's little kiddos or bigger kiddos or everything in between, and that's awesome. There are uh, many employers that will work with families with children. And so um, I don't know of any certain way to be like, show me all of the employers specifically that are okay with kids. Uh, there's just not an avenue for that at this point. Um, we'll probably get there with our ads here at Working for News, but um, even just thinking internet wide, there's not an easy way to kind of narrow that down. So um, what you guys will wanna do is um, just go through the job listings that you're, you're finding. And again, opportunities that look like they're going to be right for you, uh, you're, just go ahead and make contact with that employer. And you may want to um, consider opportunities, like if you're a family with kids, you're probably not going to go apply at a 55 plus RV resort. You know, that's not going to be the probably the best. I mean, while I'm sure the many of the people there would love to hang out with your kids and play with them because they're probably grandparents themselves and stuff, that employer's not as likely to consider you guys for their operation. Now, you might look at um, like Jellystone Parks, KOAs, uh, those types of resorts that are more kind of geared towards families and kids and have activities and cool stuff to do and pools and playgrounds and you know, those types of, of environments, like you guys are just gonna fit right in there and, and mold right in. And um, I would also look for employers that uh, maybe hire a few more, like you won't be the only work camper, work campers there at the operation. Um, Cause we have some employers where they're just looking for maybe one person or a couple and that's really all they need for whatever their operation is. And then we have some employers that are looking for hundreds, if not thousands of work campers. So if you do go work for an entity that hires many work campers, um, that means there's more like shifts and holes in the, in the schedule. There's more people to work with in the schedule. And I say that because if you need it to be, you know, one parent works one shift while another parent works an opposite shift, like you want to have a, more flexible schedule so you can more likely get that schedule if that's how you want it to be um you know because someone's probably going to need to be with the kids most of the time especially if they're younger kiddos and stuff some operations may allow you to have your kid kind of tag along with you um, it's going to be a little less likely um just for like insurance purposes workers comp and that kind of stuff like no one would want the the kiddo getting hurt or, or having any issues um, you know, like that. So um, that's probably going to be less likely. There's there may be a few like mom and pop entities um, that would be more flexible on that. Um, but yeah, just be upfront. So with your resume, you'll want to be sure to include um, everyone who's living in the RV with you. Um, you want to be upfront about who you are and what you are coming to that employer with. So that way there is less surprises. Um, and you don't end up in a situation that's not going to be right for you. So uh, just be sure to include that information with the uh, with your resume or in your initial communications with that employer. So that way, if it would happen to be an issue, you can address it without wasting um, your time or the employer's time. So, all right. Next up, is having an older RV an issue for finding more camping jobs? Uh, most of the time, no. Uh, so it's kind of similar to uh, like what we just talked about with uh, families and really the same rings true for um, for solos as well or solos that are traveling with another person. But maybe um, it's a two person team, but one of the people is going to be seeking a work camping job, but the other person maybe works on the Internet and does something out of their RV. So they're not going to be taking the work camping job, but they're going to be with that person. Um, in the RV still. So 
in the resume, in the communications, again, you just want to share that. Hey, you know, I'm applying for this position. Traveling with me is my partner. He or she won't be applying for a position because they're doing this. So we're going to need good internet. Da, 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 da. And it's kind of the same with an RV. Here's what my RV is. It's a five-year-old, 10-year-old, 15-year-old, 27-year-old, whatever it is, um, home on wheels. Uh, and you could even include a picture as well. A lot of employers like to have pictures. So it may limit you in some places. There are obviously some parks out there that still kind of have this 10 year rule. Oftentimes though, when communicating with that employer, if you're like, hey, my RV is actually 13 years old, but it looks brand new. We've really taken care of it or we've remodeled it. So it's, you know, we've made it a new, it's a 1970 something, but look how cute it is now. Once you send photos or like share, you know, some images or do a little video walk around of your RV to, to share with that employer, if they see it and they see that it, it looks good and is well kept, then it's likely not gonna be a problem. Usually that 10 year rule is kind of in place to keep out the folks that don't take care of RVs um, and, you know, have just kind of let it fall apart and stuff. And also that's gonna be more of a thing in RV parks and campgrounds, um, especially like commercial ones uh, where, you know, the business is RVs coming to camp and stuff. So they want to keep things looking as good as possible. Um, so if you do have an RV that you think maybe won't be as acceptable, and maybe it's, it's something unique like a schoolie or you've converted a box truck or something something like that like you've made something cool into your home on wheels um, if there is an entity that's like oh we don't accept that then look outside of campgrounds and rv parks there are multiple other businesses that hire work campers that aren't that specific type of business and so if you go to work for you know an entity where they have campsites provided for the work campers but the customers aren't driving in front of those campsites every day, then a lot more flexibility there, right? Um, so yeah, having an older RV might be an issue uh, at a couple places, but again, no, you should be able to find something that'll work for you. Okay, um, are there any jobs available for someone with minor mobility problems? Absolutely. Uh, so there are a lot of positions that are gonna be, you know, a little bit, um, a little bit or a lot of it depending upon the job physical um, again if we're looking at the campground rv park type job and you get into maintenance and stuff you might be you know hauling stuff around painting up on ladders down on letters ladders whatever um, and that's something to clarify too when you are looking at a, a maintenance or an out outside position versus the inside position be sure to clarify with that employer like what maintenance means to them because at one place that might be oh you're just gonna drive a golf cart and escort people to their sites and maybe sweep up some stuff here and there pick up some trash or you know maybe run a weed eater ride a riding lawnmower and other places it might be well we're going to need you to dig trenches because we're expanding our v sites and then all the buildings need painted and later this summer we're going to re-roof that and then we're going to drain the pool and paint the pool and so be sure to clarify with them what the physicality is of their maintenance positions because it could really kind of run the gamut. Um, it's, it's just gonna depend on the employer. Uh, but yeah, so getting back to this question more specifically, um, definitely, uh, if you do wanna lean towards the campground RV park opportunity, uh, then you're gonna look more for the you know inside office positions. And it, the office is gonna kind of vary too. So, um, working in like registration or whatever could be you're just in a gatehouse and you know people come up to the gatehouse and so you just need to hand them some stuff click some things on a computer and that's going to be it or it could be an office where it's an office and a store you know because maybe the campground like is selling food or rv parts or whatever else and maybe they're lining up people for um you know, maybe they have like boat rentals or tours going on that they also, and so you're going to be, you know, stocking stuff and receiving inventory and unpackaging it. And so maybe you're going to be up and down and up and down and up and down, not just like chilling in a cushy chair most of the day. 
Um, and obviously bigger RV resorts will usually be busier and have a lot more going on. So maybe a smaller RV park um, or a smaller um, like uh, Corps of Engineer project, just volunteering, working in the gatehouse, uh, even in the visitor center. Oftentimes working at a visitor center, you're just there to answer questions, dispense information. Um, so they're not going to be, you know, looking to you to run laps around the place. Uh, so, so definitely you can find opportunities in that RV park and campground realm. Um, there's also, like I said, other jobs that are out there. Um, amusement parks, hire work campers. You might do really well um, at the front gate operations. Uh, just with that type of entity, make sure you know what your trek is going to be to your job site. Um, with an amusement park, it could be you'd have to walk from the employee check-in area all the way to the front gate, or maybe they would golf cart you. It's just going to depend. Uh, but yeah, like working um, in some tour companies that hire work campers, whether it be kayak tours or um, like their tours of where people go on horseback out into the wilderness and um, up in Alaska, there's all kinds of tour companies. Uh, you know, those need people to be there to make the reservations and answer phones all day and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, again, it's just being up front with that employer. Um, be sure to let them know what you are capable of and, and if you do have some limitations. Um, you know, and you could even start if you're like concerned, they're going to disqualify you right away if you say anything like, well, just be like, it maybe make it more so where you're asking the questions, you know, um, am I going to be required to lift things or, um, you know, what's the situation behind the desk? Is there chairs or not chairs or, you know, you can kind of generate some questions like that to help get into that conversation of, you know, what you would be able to handle and what you wouldn't be able to handle. Um, yeah, because the, the jobs are really just going to vary. There's going to be some opportunities where most of the time you're on the clock, you know, you could probably bring a book and just hang out. You're kind of just there to be eyes and catch people as they're coming and going. Um, where other opportunities, you know, it's going to be like when you're working, you're, you're cranking and you're moving and doing and there's always stuff to do and always going, going, going. So again, it's just kind of finding your niche in the different opportunities that are out there. All righty, next up here. Are there jobs that pay 15 to $20 an hour? Yes, there are. Um, there's not gonna be like, most jobs are not gonna pay that much in the work camping realm, uh, but there definitely are some. And that goes back to doing the math on a work camping job. Because this is gonna be a little different sometimes. Not all work camping jobs provide an RV site as part of the compensation. Um, it's really going to vary by employer, but there are going to be times where the employer is providing non-monetary things to the work camper. Um, so we have to do a little bit of work to figure out kind of what the true value of a work camping uh, compensation package is. Uh, we do have an article, it's in our article index at WorkCamper.com um, about doing the math on a work camping job. And we talk a lot more in depth about it. There's even a worksheet um, that you can utilize uh, where you can you know, use it when communicating with an employer to annotate the value of what's being provided to you and then more easily do the math to find out what your hourly wage will equate to. So that's available on our website. But yeah, um, okay. I won't get, in, I wanted to talk all about it, but I won't get too in depth because I know we've got more questions to get through here. So I'm not gonna talk all about doing the math. Uh, but yes, there are opportunities that pay that much. Um, sugar beet harvest is probably one of the highest paying uh, work camping jobs. They pay over that. Amazon Camper Force, of course, is another one. Uh, DigiKey, which is an electronics fulfillment center up in Minnesota, uh, they pay that much. Um, and I've seen wages like that at different, um, even campgrounds and RV parks as well. Um, it's going to kind of depend on the minimum wage of the state uh, and if the position is a seasonal position or uh, not a seasonal position, that can affect the wage as well. Um, and sometimes too, it, it's, it kind of depends. Um, so like the value of the RV site is going to vary. If you're picking a place in like 
Jackson, Wyoming or Pigeon Forge, Tennessee or um, like a bigger city like Seattle or San Francisco or Dallas or somewhere like that. Places where um, it's, a, it's a big city, a lot of or heavy tourism in that area. Um, RV sites around those vicinities are typically just more expensive in general. Uh, some of them won't even have like monthly rates. Some of them don't even do weekly rates. Um, it's nightly only. And um, those could be anywhere from $50 to $120 a night for that RV site. So when an RV site is provided to you as compensation, like that is a certainly a value um, to you. So when you're looking at some of these campground jobs where they're going to pay you for every hour worked, yes, that hourly wage might be like eight to ten dollars an hour, but then you're getting an RV site that normally rents, if it's only a, a weekly or a nightly site, like that value could be anywhere from 50 to to hundred bucks a night, you know, that added on to your base wage, you're gonna be up there in that more 15 to 20 dollar range that you're looking for. Um, other opportunities would be um, Southern Cross where you uh, walk gas lines. Uh, they pay pretty well. Uh, who else? Uh, the companies uh, AGS and Southeast Publications, they uh, seek work campers to travel around and uh, make connections with businesses around an RV park and they sell the advertising that like goes in the campground maps and on the campground's website or whatever, there's different packages that they sell. Um, so it's, it's a sales position, but you're earning commissions um, and, and some other benefits and stuff like that. So um, that can be pretty lucrative for some folks. Um, uh, ta -ta -ta. Uh, Christmas tree lots. So obviously in November and December, uh, there's multiple entities that hire work campers to operate, you know, that tent that sets up in town and sells the Christmas trees. You could be the work camper that's living at that tent site and selling the Christmas trees. Um, oftentimes you get a base rate for that um, and or commission from the sales. Uh, pumpkins is also done in October. Uh, fireworks tents, same kind of deal. Um, I don't know for sure if that would equate to the 15 to 20, but it's definitely a short-term, higher-paying uh, work camping opportunity. Um, so those are the ones I can think of off the top, off the top of my head. Um, in the upcoming issue of our magazine, Work Camper News Magazine, uh, it's going to be our July-August issue. Uh, we're going to have a feature article that covers many higher-paying work camping opportunities. Um, so they're they're definitely out there. All righty. Uh, when filling out a resume, what do you put in the experience section if you've never had a work camper job before? Uh, and and that's that's a great question. And I know a lot of folks are like, oh, I've never done these types of jobs. Am I going to get hired? Uh, most employers are just seeking positive, upbeat, flexible, willing to learn and participate little happy sponges. So um, don't get too um, fearful and concerned and don't, you know, tear yourself down about it with an employer. Oh, I've never done this before, so I don't know if I'm gonna be good for you. That's not good talk. Um, you likely have skills and abilities that you've acquired just as a human that are gonna apply to these work camping jobs. So if you've ever done anything customer service related, whether it was in a job that you had in the past or maybe you um, did stuff like at your church Maybe you um, were an usher or you helped with the breakfast there. Uh, maybe you did a book club and, and organized a book club. Maybe you were um, a coach like for your kids' sports teams or a Girl Scout, Boy Scout leader. You know, there's stuff we've done in our lives, even outside of careers, that have given us skills like organization skills, leadership skills patience, um, maybe uh, money handling, uh, perhaps something like that gave you a lot of experience working on a computer. Um, so a lot of times, especially if you're seeking um, like a working at an office at a campground doing reservations and stuff like that, if you're really comfortable on a computer, if you're like, yeah, train me on a piece of software, I'll have it down, I can click away, or I'm familiar with Excel spreadsheets, or I'm comfortable doing email, or you know, here's a sample of my writing. I can string sentences together really well. Like that's that's your 
there you go. Like that's going to be great uh, for an office position. So replying to customer emails, answering them in complete sentences, good. You know, just little things like that. Um, so don't sell yourself short. So think about what you've done, even in owning a home, um, probably mowed grass, did light landscaping, uh, light maintenance. If you ever painted stuff and had to change out a light fixture or something went wrong with something in the plumbing or the flooring or the whatever, and you had to fix it, you know, um, if you kind of dabbled in stuff like that, you know, include it. I was a homeowner for 30 years and we maintained all the stuff on our house and I'm very comfortable on a such and such mower or whatever. Um, I, I can weed eat for two hours. I can handle that, you know? Um, so yeah, don't sell yourself short and think about all the different stuff you've done in your life. So when you're making your little list of skills, you know, pull from what you've done in your career, but also what you've done um, in your home life and personal life, etc. cetera. And um, when looking at the different work camping jobs, you'll see like some employers will you know, say kind of what they're looking for, or at least like list the duties and things like that. So you'll have an idea of what you will likely need to be doing with a position. And so if, if you are specifically going after something um, and you're like, I know what this job needs me to do, so what can I list in my skills that really apply to this job I want to go for? Okay, um, so a, a little bit of a, you know, working there, uh, but, but once you do this a little bit, and again, just get one or two jobs under your belt, you'll be fine. Most employers are willing to train, and um, again, they're just looking for flexible, upbeat, willing to, you know, get in there, show me what to do, and I'll do it, I'll give my best. Um, that's, that's really the, the bottom line, you guys, with what these employers are looking for. Um, and like I said, there's, there's right now there's more jobs than there are work campers taking the jobs. So um, don't stress too much about that lack of experience. Um, and I would go ahead, um, if most employers don't need to know every job you've done since you, know, you were 14. Um, I would list kind of maybe the last one or two if you've had multiple, um, or just be sure to include any that are applicable um, to the positions that you are wanting to go for. And um, yeah, okay. I think that's all the things in my brain on that for now. All right, let's move on here. All right, what questions should I ask? Firstly, when searching for a work camping position. And, um, you know, we kind of touched on this a little bit. So you have to have you have to have asked yourself questions and answered those questions for yourself. And um, if you're traveling with a partner or a spouse or a family or a team or a friend or family, whoever, if you're gonna be doing this adventure with someone else, make sure you guys have that conversation together and know what both of you are looking for in this lifestyle and what you wanna go for. Um, so that way you guys are on the same page. So. Like we talked about before, you're going to know what you need budget wise, where you want to be, what you want to do, um, or at least a general idea. You don't have to be like, I know I specifically want this job in this location. If you're open, you're like, I want to try new things. Oh, that was one thing I wanted to mention before um, when we were talking about, oh, I don't have any experience. Our employer's going to like me. Um, you could spin that a little bit too and be like, look, I've never done this type of position before. I have no bad habits. Whatever you tell me to do is the way I'm going to do it, and we're going to rock and roll, and it's going to be awesome. So you can kind of come in as a blank slate and say, I am moldable clay, so mold away, employer. And they'll be like, all right, cool, because they know you're not going to be like, well, at this other place, I rub this way instead of this way. Are you sure you want me to rub this way and not this way? And they're going to be like, oh, my God, just do what I told you to do. You know, you're gonna be like, oh, I should do it this way. All right, I'm gonna do it this way. And they're gonna be like, yes. So there you go. Okay, sorry, rabbit trail. Okay, so when searching for a work camping position, questions you should ask, you know, um, is the opportunity where you wanna be? Is it the type of duties that you wanna do? Um, and this kind of will, again, <laughs> some employers are really good at providing information in their ads and others you're gonna be like, 
what what are you looking for? Um, so it's some are going to be harder than others to deal with. Um, so this kind of also trends into answering the second point here when talking with an employer before accepting position, what questions should I ask? I mean, you guys want to know uh, what your schedule is going to be like. You need to know for sure what your compensation is going to be. Um, how is that compensation going to be paid to you? Again, is it weekly, bi-weekly, monthly? Is it direct deposit? Are they giving you a little, you know, visa card with the money on it? Um, paying you cash under the table, who knows? Uh, also, you'll wanna know if the opportunity, um, if you're gonna be considered a W-2 employee or are you working for that employer as a contractor? As there are some positions out there that warrant the contractor situation. Um, I believe doing the um, gate guarding in Texas, um, that's a really popular job for two person teams. They set you up at like the gate of something for the oil fields and you just check people in and check people out and you're just there to be eyes and let people in and out of the gate um that's a that's a 1099 contractor position um and there, there are other uh contracting options as well uh some employers may treat you as a 1099 contractor and they shouldn't be treating you as a 1099 contractor you actually should be a w-2 employee so you want to know the differences between those two um, and understand the tax ramifications of both, so that way you don't end up in a situation that's not going to be right for you, you know, when it comes time to do your tax return. Um, and, you know, some work campers may um, be set up in a certain way, social security, disability, or whatever else, where you can't earn so much money, because that could be detrimental to the programs that you're a part of, whatever. So lots of factors there. So make sure you're asking those questions. So no surprises money wise coming down the line. Also, you want to know what your RV site is going to be like. If they're providing you an RV site or providing you housing, what's that about? Um, is my RV site going to be right next to the dumpster in the dump station? Or am I going to have a site that's completely covered in trees, but I'm a satellite TV person? That's not going to work. Um, is it wide enough? Is it long enough? Um, driving to that location, is there going to be a ferry that I have to take to get there or a too short of a bridge? I can't get my RV under it to get there. Uh, those are things that you, you want to know uh, just logistically. Uh, then again, schedules. When am I going to be working? Is the schedule going to be consistent or is it going to just kind of be a little willy nilly? Just going to depend on the operation, how many work campers are there, etc. Um, am I going to have a manager that I'm going to work with or is the person that you're interviewing with going to be your manager supervisor? If the person that you're interviewing with is not going to be who you're reporting to and working with at the job, maybe ask to communicate with that manager supervisor to see if your personality's job. If you, you know, get on the phone with that person and they sound like someone that you never ever want to talk to ever in your life, then maybe we need to switch departments or even find a different opportunity. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, schedules, duties. Let's make sure to have a strong idea of what the expectations are, what that employer is going to be expecting you to do. Um, is there going to be a chance where if something changes during the season and it gets busy or it gets slow, am I going to have less hours? Am I going to have more hours? Are you going to expect me to do other duties outside of what we're talking about right now? Uh, those are things that you'll want to know. Um, is there any kind of um, some employers will provide a, uh, a bonus at the end of the season. So what are the details on that? Um, typically, you'll have to fulfill whatever your commitment dates are um, to receive that bonus. So let's figure out what the details are. Am I going to get that bonus after I leave? If so, am I for sure going to get it? And how am I going to get it? Uh, that kind of thing. Um, oh, and I had another thought, too, and it just ran away in my brain. All right, um, we have in our article index um, some uh, lists of questions that work campers have put together. Uh, there's also a video in our media library about interviewing, talks all about interviewing, gives you guys a good idea on that. Um, we also recommend a work agreement. So a work agreement is just a written out spiel of expectations. So whether you write it or whether the employer writes it, um, it goes over start dates, end dates, um, again, what the schedule is going to be like, what the compensation is going to be. It can lay out duties, details of bonuses, things like that. Time off. That was the thing that came in my brain. Um, you know, a lot of times work campers, it, 
you know, you, you can commit to maybe a six month position, but oh, I need to be able to fly home or drive home because so-and-so is getting married or graduating or something or whatever. So I need to be gone for like a week or two weeks. Is that going to be okay? How's that going to work? Um, so again, more questions to ask. And that could also go in the work agreement if the employer's like, yeah, you can take two weeks off in our busiest time of year, no problem. Let's get that written out in the work agreement. So when it's about a week or two before and you're like, hey, remember, I'm going to be gone for two weeks. They go, what? You can't leave for two weeks. You'll be like, well, you said I could. This was our work agreement. So how are we going to make this work, employer? So anyway, the work agreement just lays out expectations. Um, so both you and the employer should sign it before you accept that opportunity for sure. Um, that's, that's what we recommend doing. And we have a video about it in our media library at workkeeper.com uh, to go over some more details on that. All right, Whew. okay. Hopefully that's a, a good start there um, to uh, helping you out with those questions. Okay, a few more questions here to go, guys. All right, uh, what are some skills to have for quick hiring and success? Um, we kind of talked a little bit about this already, but um, again, a lot of employers looking for that positive attitude, that willingness to put in 100%, be a team player, things like that. So um, for quick hiring and success, I would say uh, make sure that your resume is filled out well and you have good information provided um, if you're using our resume builder tool that's going to get you on that path for sure make sure you are communicating uh quickly when an employer you know sends you an email sends you a text or whatever um, try as much as you can to get back to them as quickly as possible um, and just you know be clear in your communications as well uh, with them um, yeah, be sure to follow instructions. Um, that's something that um, we hear from employers too. Uh, so maybe in their ad it says, you know, please call this phone number to apply. And if you go to their Facebook page and send them a Facebook message, you didn't follow the instructions in the ad. So they may not ever reply to you, may not even consider you at all because you just didn't follow the instructions in the ad. Or if the ad says, please no phone calls, and you call them, eh, don't do that. Um, so follow the instructions in the ad as best you can. Uh, so that's that's one thing too, just to, to follow that process. Because some employers will put specifics, like they'll say, send an email to da -da -da -da, subject line, you know, work camper job 2020 November. And if you don't do that, you don't have that in the subject line, you don't send the email to them like that, they may be like, they can't follow directions. I'm not considering this applicant. <sighs> so anyway, sometimes, some are particular uh, with their instructions. Any who's need. Um, so yeah, skills to have. Uh, there are some work campers who will, um, who if you're interested in doing like the campground office reservation position, there are, whew, a boatload of different reservation software systems out there that campgrounds utilize, there's a lot more now than they used to be. Um, you, those different reservation software companies usually each have a website and the website may have tutorial videos or like a downloadable demo of their software. Um, there's one company I think that even has like a training course you can go through to get certified on their software. So. Some work campers will take that initiative to kind of play around and explore, try to learn um, one or two of the different software systems that are out there. Um, you don't have to do that. Most of the time, the employers are going to train you. And I've, work campers have said kind of once you learn one software system, a lot of the others are fairly similar. So it's kind of quicker to pick them up, um, even if it is a different system. Uh, but we have an article in our article index, um, campground reservation software, and just links to some of the different ones that are out there if you want to check that out. Uh, so that's that's something that I've heard of folks are doing. Some work campers, um, before they, you know, really embark on this lifestyle, uh, maybe they have a state park close by, a Corps of Engineer project, um, county park even, that has a volunteer program. You could go, even if you don't take your RV and do the whole trade out for an RV site thing, um, you could see if you could go and volunteer 
uh, for you know so many hours a week or whatnot, um, just assisting you know with the property and what's going on there. Um, so a lot of those entities, the National Park Service, I think, has that kind of uh, volunteer program as well. So you might be able to do some minimal volunteering uh, just in your local area that can kind of gain you some experience um, in in the realm of uh, work camping worlds. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's a couple ideas. Um, again, like I like I told you guys, there's more opportunities than there are work campers now. So um, it's probably easier now to get a job than um, in other years before. So uh, don't sell yourself short and don't hold back and be you know scared or concerned about it. Alrighty, uh, when searching for your first job, how do you get a place to email you back uh, and any specific details to stand out? So um, good question here. Obviously this person's um, done the process a little bit and um, yeah, it can be super frustrating. So uh, let's talk again about um, kind of when to apply. So in the work camping world, especially if we're looking in the outdoor hospitality industry, there's kind of two main seasons. There's the spring, summer season and the fall, winter season. Spring, summer is like April, May through September, October. And then fall, winter is obviously those other months. So you'll see a lot of opportunities advertised for those two chunks of time. Now, there are certainly entities that will do shorter stints than, you know, that six months or so. Um, those, those jobs are out there, too. But so if I'm looking to start a job in April or May, I um, would start reviewing job listings and make sure your resume is up to date and active and out there at least four months, if not even six months ahead. Um, and just as another example, like right now, so it's um, what, end of May. So a lot of work campers are beginning their summer positions right now. And so they're starting to look for their fall winter jobs. You know, that may start in October. So you can start as early as four to six months before that start date of the job. And that's totally cool. There's a lot of employers that know where campers like to plan ahead and they'll start doing their recruiting then. They may be advertising then. So you might contact an employer in October, November, December for that summer start date, but then you don't hear from them until January and you want to like pull your hair out and you're like, why are they not getting back to me? So it's just going to depend on the employer, unfortunately. So some will start advertising and will accept inquiries, but then won't respond to them for a while. And that can be frustrating. Some are Johnny on the spot. They get an email, they email back. Um, some have online application processes. And so it could be the application comes in and it'll be two to four to five business days until you get some communication based on that application submission. Um, Entities that are um, more mom and pop or kind of smaller operations that don't have like an HR person or an HR team, uh, you're probably gonna be a little slower in getting a contact back from them uh, just because those owners are wearing a lot of hats. They're doing the hiring and trying to get their operation either closed down or started up for the next season and you know buying stuff and cleaning stuff and bookkeeping and all the other things. Um, so those folks, you may want to give a little more grace. Um, bigger entities, uh, the bigger resorts, um, like camper force, amusement parks, they'll typically have an HR person or a team. And so hopefully that communication happens a little bit quicker. Um, and, and I think you should expect that as well with those, those kinds of uh, places. So um, email is not always reliable as well. Um, Lots of times stuff will end up in spam or not even make it into um, an email inbox. It could be that email provider just blocked it all together. It's not even in spam. Uh, a lot of these entities, uh, RV parks and stuff, um, they're you know utilizing an email service. Like they've paid to use an email service, just like we do here at WorkCamper News. You know, we pay to have an email service. So you email to at WorkCamper.com. And so, you know, sometimes we just don't get stuff. Um, just because we don't, we can do what we can to tell our email provider to let emails in, but sometimes it just doesn't come in. So anyway, so email is not always reliable. So one thing I would say too is um, if the employer has uh, included in their ad a phone number that you can call, definitely call. So um, if your first contact is an email, 
wait a few business days and it's going to kind of depend so like if you're looking for a job that's four to six months out you might wait a week and then call and say hey just wanted to see if you got my resume da, 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 da. Um, if you are looking for a position starting like next month or yesterday send your email wait a day call hey i sent my uh, email uh, resume yesterday did you guys get it i just wanted to see uh, i would have loved to start working for you guys last week and would love to talk to you more um, so again, the timing of the follow-up is going to kind of vary depending upon the urgency of the opportunity, uh, when you want to start that opportunity. Um, if you go into our resume builder system and you email out your resume to that employer and you don't hear back, now try sending an email from your personal email to that employer saying, hey, last week I sent my email, um, I sent my resume to you via email. Uh, it came from resume or camper.com. Just wanted to see if you got it. Da, 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 da. So you can try using the two different email sources that way uh, to do your follow up. And um, you can, like, if their ad doesn't say, you know, no phone calls or whatever, uh, I would definitely try calling them. If you are months out from starting, you could even send them something in the mail. Huh? That's going to make you stand out because how often. I mean, other than sending what your grandkids birthday cards, how often do we mail stuff anymore? You know, so if you send even a little postcard or maybe a nice letter, print out your resume and include your resume and uh, send them a little letter, you can always mail something to them. That's going to make you stand out. Um, what else? You could <laughs> just try to contact them as many ways as possible. If they have a Facebook page, send them a message through their Facebook page. If they have a like a contact us form on their website you could try filling that out and submitting through their website so there's usually multiple different ways to kind of try to jump up and down in front of an employer to get their attention um, and you know some employers again will be great at contacting you back and others you'll just feel totally ghosted and that can be super frustrating um, so get it it's up to you and kind of if that opportunity you feel like you know this is looking really good. I really think this could be a good match. I just have a few more questions and things to check off my list, but this could be the one. Then, you know, let's let's mail, let's call as long as it doesn't say no calls. Um, you could try texting, Facebook messages, uh, messages through the website, um, you know, wherever you can kind of find that company online. If there's a communication portal, you know, let's let's try to use it. Uh, usually, what is it? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. So uh, don't overdo it. Don't send them, you know, 20 emails, uh, but at least, you know, get a few emails in there, a few points of contact. And if you're just not hearing anything back, then it could just be time to move on. Um, we can. So when you email your resume through our resume builder tool, you click email resume. And it gives you a place where you can put in an employer name, the email address, and a little message box. So you can, you know, say whatever you want in that little message box. And then you can send it. And it'll keep a log of when you sent your resume and who you sent your resume to. So you'll be able to easily go in there and be like, oh, when, when did I contact that, last, that employer? Was it a couple days ago? Oh, you can go back in there and see it's been a couple days, it's been a week, or, or whatever. Or here's another thing, guys make sure the email address you're sending to, you input it correctly. Um, I've seen multiple times a work camper trying to email their resume to www.thecampground.com. That's a website address, that's not an email address. So that resume went nowhere. So again, just make sure you've got it typed in there correctly. Uh, there's no extra spaces or little typos. Um, so again, just, just verify that. And the same if you're calling or texting, uh, text especially. If you're sending a text, make sure you input that number correctly because it, it could be just as simple as that. And also on the other side of that, um, on your resume or um, you know signature in your email, uh, whatever, make sure your information is correct. So make sure your, your email address shows correctly on your resume, your phone number is correct. Um, if you're emailing from your personal email to the employer, they're gonna have your email address, but maybe you have a signature line with your phone number and stuff, make sure all that is correct. So we're gonna proofread and double check everything, okay? Um, all right, so there's just a little tip there. Okay, all right.
Uh, oh, and keys standing out. Sorry, I didn't exactly hit on that. A lot of employers, since with work camping, you guys are likely applying uh, with a company that is maybe hundreds or thousands of miles away. You're not going to be able to go in in an in-person interview. So a lot of employers request to have photos included with your resume because you guys aren't going to be able to necessarily meet face to face. You don't have to include photos um, if you don't want to. Uh, it's, you know, it is okay for them to ask for photos, but you don't have to include it if you don't want to. But if you don't include photos, be prepared for that employer to say, well, you need to come meet me in person then, or we need to at least do like a, a webcam call, Skype or Zoom or FaceTime or any of those services. Um, we're blessed to have that kind of technology now so we can do this kind of internet face-to-face -face call. Um, so including photos with your resume, might be a way to help you stand out. And I would recommend, um, you you gotta think about your photos too. Um, a, a headshot showing, you know, face and shoulders. Uh, please no sunglasses, that way they can see your whole face or no hats down, you know, over your face or whatever, make sure they can see you clearly. Um, I would do a, a full body shot like this photo here in the PowerPoint slide of this couple standing in front of their RV. That would be a great photo to include on your resume. And then include a photo of your full RV setup. Um, so if it's a, a trailer and your tow vehicle or a motorhome and a vehicle you tow behind your motorhome, try and get all of that in one photo so they can see like what your normal kind of campsite setup is. Um, so that's what I would recommend for photos. So following instructions with the ad, having a good complete filled out resume, um, those are gonna be ways to stand out. And again, just communicating quickly and clearly with that employer following the instructions. Okay, how to get in uh, with the national parks and KOAs. So um, I would just utilize their systems. Um, so KOA specifically, uh, many moons ago now, we helped them create their work camper program. And so their program is work space camper with a K, uh, work camper. KOA. <laughs> um, so they have their own uh, membership organization that you can join and the KOA properties that utilize that system list their jobs in there. Um, you can create a resume in their system. Uh, but again, it's only then just going to be KOAs. Uh, there are KOAs that use our system to find work campers and maybe other stuff on the internet too. So you don't have to be in that KOA membership program to take jobs at KOAs. Um, but it does have some benefits and maybe you know, some connectivity uh, that you wouldn't have elsewhere. So if you go to work at koa.com, so it's work at at koa.com, uh, that's the website that'll have more information on their uh, program. Uh, but KOAs use the same reservation software system. So kind of once you have that down, you know, that's going to look good on your resume to other KOAs. And um, there may be some um, that have uh, where it's one owner owns multiples. And so that might be a way for you to bounce around to their different entities. You know, same ownership. You've done a good job. You're already in their database, whatever. Um, you could move more easily through their, their different properties. Um, but, but yeah, uh, so that's kind of the KOA system. Uh, with national parks, so... With national parks, there's kind of two ways uh, to go about work camping there. So the National Park Service does have a volunteer program. Uh, many of them, uh, many of the national parks have campgrounds and so they need camp hosts and volunteers. So um, you can do their volunteer program. If you go to nps.gov, you can learn more about their volunteer program. Um, I don't know that there are paid positions with the National Park Service that would correlate directly like RV site provided, et cetera. Um, I'm, I don't know of any. I mean, if you wanna go be a ranger, that's cool. You can go apply and be a, a park ranger. I don't know that, like I said, I don't know if they give you an RV site, but you might get to wear one of the cool hats. Also with the national parks, not all of them, but certainly the more popular ones, there are uh, concessionaires that operate in and around these parks. That's gonna be uh, Zantera, Delaware North, Aramark. Um, those are the three big ones. 
So those entities, oh, mm, let me start with the concessionaire first. So those three entities, um, many of them hire work campers for, for, for their parks. So Delaware North specifically, they operate um, Yellowstone General Stores. Uh, they recruit more for their Yellowstone location than their other locations. But um, so you would work um, in the park, but the facilities are operated by that concessionaire. They're not operated by the National Park Service. So you would be a W-2 employee uh, working an hourly job for wages and other benefits. Then you would actually be deducted, I think it's weekly, um, a fee for the RV site that they're going to provide to you that is near to the working location. And um, I know some folks are like, oh, a work camper should never pay a fee for an RV site. But technically, you're being paid for every hour worked. So it's just like every other job, like they're paying you for the work done. And usually the RV site fee, it's been a while. Um, we have some job in ours on our YouTube channel. If you want to learn more specifically about Yellowstone General Stores, check out that on our YouTube channel. They've done multiple recordings, giving you all the details on their jobs. But I think the site fee is something like 70 bucks a week. So for a full hookup RV site inside of a national park, that can accommodate oftentimes longer than 30 foot RVs for 70 bucks a week. Like that's a steal. You're going to be paying possibly 70 bucks a night for a no hookup RV site at one of the National Park Service campgrounds, or maybe 30 to 40 bucks, but even so, a night, you know. Uh, I, I just, to me, it's a minimal fee to live amongst this beautiful national park. And then, you know, you're gonna be working, get paid for every hour, all your hours worked, et cetera. You're still gonna leave with money in your pocket, even though you are paying a little bit for your site. And they do this because the concessionaire is leasing the RV sites from the National Park Service. So as a business, it makes sense for them to put some of that cost to them onto the work campers. And it's the same for the dormitories. If you go to work for them and you live in the dormitory, there's a fee for living in the dormitory. And they have like employee dining rooms and stuff too, so you can get on a meal plan. And um, it's, it's a pretty cool little community. So um, it may not be the right opportunity for you, but I think it's pretty super, super cool gig. So um, there are those types of entities at multiple different parks, um, national parks around. There's also usually, um, and it's just, it's going to depend on the park. So um, in Yellowstone, I think it's called Yellowstone Forever, and it's like an association. Um, or in Grand Canyon, it's called Grand Canyon Conservancy. It's basically, um, an entity they usually have a gift shop so the job is like retail um it's a retail operation so you're you're working retail um but the association like you know when people buy stuff you get them to like donate or buy this other thing and the funds from that thing go to the conservancy and then the conservancy has like programs or does stuff to conserve something or other for the park and da, 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 da. and it's super cool um so concessionaires conservancies or associations um there are also usually yellowstone especially sorry i keep coming back to that but so many people like to go there uh, but grand canyon is the same um olympic national park glacier national park like many of them have this where there's little you know bordering communities and in those communities there's retail shops and restaurants and hotels and lodges um, there's an imax movie theater on the west side of yellowstone these types of entities hire work campers to operate their businesses. So lots of different options if you wanna be in and around a national park. So, uh, but yeah, once you get in with a concessionaire, if you do a good job, they're, you're in their system. Um, and so that could make it easier for you to move around to some of their different um, opportunities. So, all right. We did it guys. Um, all right, those were all the questions that were submitted uh, ahead of time. Um, so I appreciate you guys getting those questions in, but again, we're, we're happy to help. Um, we're here to provide you the best toolkit for finding that work camping job that's right for you or multiple work camping jobs that are right for you. Uh, like I said, you guys can work this lifestyle however you want. So um, please feel free to contact us. Our online home is workcamper.com. You can email us, give us a call. Uh, lots of educational resources, job listings, um, education, community. 
uh, we hope to help you guys make your travel dreams come true. That's what we're here for and what we love doing. So thank you guys so much for listening in. Uh, we hope you'll become a yearly member and join us on future webinars, watch for future videos, etc. cetera. So um, here wishing you safe travels and happy work camping out there. <laughs> Thanks everybody.